has declared that you are mine in baptism. And so we're going to have one this morning here, um, which will be a wonderful event for us. Um, also, we'll have an installation of our church officers, mainly our church council and our elders today. Uh, so we'll see uh, our elected leaders for, uh, for the congregation during that part of the service. But everything is pretty well lined up for you in your uh, service bulletin. We start on page 3 with the first hymn, which is hymn number 282. That's in the red hymnals that are sitting just in front of you. Hymn 282, Lord, open now my heart to hear. God bless your worship. Savior. Through him you have rescued me from 
from the guilt of my sin and given me the peace of forgiveness. Help me fight against temptation, correct whatever wrongs I can, and serve you and those around me with love and good works. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. We'll sing the first verse of hymn 297, Baptized in Water. Just the first verse for now, hymn 297. children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. It is in baptism that God grants the new life of forgiveness, joy, and peace to little children. By the power of God's word, this gracious water of life washes away sin, delivers from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe. They will receive the sign of the cross on your head, and on your heart, to mark you as a redeemed child of Christ. Kayla Lynn Zielinski, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has forgiven all of your sins. By your baptism you are born again and made a dear child of your Father in heaven. May God strengthen you to live in your baptismal grace all the days of your life. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord commands that we teach his precious truths to all who are baptized. Christian love, therefore, urges all of us, especially parents and sponsors, to assist in whatever manner possible so that Caleb may remain the child of God unto death. If you're willing to carry out this responsibility, then answer, yes, as God gives me the strength. Yes, as God gives me the strength. Let us pray. Merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing of baptism by which you offer and grant the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Help us to regard our baptism as the robes of righteousness we are to wear all the days of our life. Look with special favor on Kayla and grant her a rich measure of your spirit that she may grow in faith and godly living. Make us willing to carry out our responsibilities to those who have been baptized so that all of us may finally come to the blessed joys of heaven. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing the remaining verses of hymn 297. <laughs>
first lesson for this Sunday comes from Ezekiel chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, going all the way to chapter 3, verse 4. These words will serve as a basis of this morning's sermon. We hear it. The Lord said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me, and their fathers have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid, though briars and thorns are all around you, and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of what they say or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious house. You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not rebel like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Then I looked, and I saw a hand stretched out to me. In it was a scroll, which he unrolled before me. On both sides of it were written words of lament and mourning and woe. And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go and speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Then he said to me, Son of man, eat the scroll I am giving you, and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. He then said to me, Son of man, go now to the house of Israel, and speak my words to them. This is the word of our Lord. Second reading comes from 2 Timothy chapter, four, or chapter 3, verse 10, going in chapter 4, verse 5. Paul is giving Timothy a pastor charge, and to preach that word of God, just as we heard to Ezekiel. But even knowing that he'll do it when people won't want to listen to it. So we hear from 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 10. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you have learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine, Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. This is the word of our Lord. Please stand to sing the Alleluia's. comes from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. Jesus goes to a synagogue in his own town and preaches there. But he finds out that people reject him just simply because they knew him. They saw him grow up. 
but that doesn't stop Jesus from proclaiming the word of God. We hear from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him that he even does miracles? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, Only in his hometown, among his relatives, and in his own house, is a prophet without honor. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hand on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around from teaching from village to village. This is the gospel of our Lord. children to come up for a children's message.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The lesson that we're going to focus on this morning was the first one that we heard from Ezekiel chapters 2 and 3. But as we begin meditation on that word, let us pray. Oh Lord, open our hearts that we would hear your word this morning, that your word would lead us to action that we would preach your word and plant it home. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, the hymn we just sang, Preach You the Word and Plant It Home, it was written by uh, Martin H. Franzman in the last century. And what I'm reminded by consistently by one of our members is that many of our hymns are kind of mini sermons unto themselves. The, the message that they contain is it's just got so much depth to it, and Martin Franzman's hymn is no exception. For him, when he lived in the 20th century, he was known, he was a Lutheran pastor, he was known for standing up that the Bible is the word of God, that it is without error, in a time period where many pastors were questioning that. It seems like Paul was dealing with the exact same thing when he wrote to Timothy, saying, preach the word, be prepared, in season and out of season, correct Rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction, for the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. So just like Franz Monroe, Paul told Timothy, preach you the word and plant it home to those who like or like it not. I mean, all of our lessons today are about preaching the word of God. Started with Ezekiel, with God's commission to Ezekiel to preach that word to those Israelites. It went on for Paul instructing Timothy to hold true to sound teachings, even when others don't. And then Jesus himself preaching in his hometown synagogue. But you probably also may have noticed that each of these don't just deal with just preaching. But they're talking about planting that word home to those who like it or like it not. To Jesus, he preached that word, and the reaction of the crowd was, isn't this the carpenter? This is the kid we see. We saw him grow up. He's just a man. He's no great spiritual guru. He's not some great rabbi. And they took offense at him. Didn't listen to him. To Timothy, and Paul's instructions to him, I mean, how, how applicable are those words to us today that men will not put up with sound doctrine? And we hear that all the time as people continue to stray from the word of God to their own ideas. It's happening all over. And then you have Ezekiel. And God is very upfront with Ezekiel. Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you to are obstinate and stubborn. The word rebel comes up in that section eight times. Eight times are the people that Ezekiel is going to. That's how God describes them. But God just simply says, You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. Preach you the word and plant it home to those who like it or like it not. In thinking about all these lessons, and I pulled up my call letter that I received to come here to Light the Valley. And I looked at the duties that were listed there. And never once did I find listed in the duties, come and preach to stubborn, obstinate, rebellious people. <laughs> Left that out. Left that out. Yeah. I don't know of any pastor that says, oh boy, I want a call to preach to stubborn, obstinate, rebellious people, and yet any pastor knows that in any area, any part of this world that you go to to preach the word, there are going to be stubborn, obstinate, and rebellious people. There are going to be people, they're not sitting there wringing their hands at the door, I'm wondering when that Lutheran pastor is going to come on by and pay me a visit, I can't wait. No, they're thinking, did you shut the blinds? Because we don't want to talk to the person at the door. We don't want to hear what you have to say. Just hearing it in casual conversation, you get the ponderings 
of that rebellious heart and the phrases such as, well, who's to say what's really truth? Or, you know, I know religion's a good thing and all that, but I don't really need it in my life right now. I'll wait till later on. Or just simply, you'll have people who walk away from you or who slam the door in your face. But is that really so surprising? Stubborn, obstinate, rebellious hearts. We have our own personal experience with it. And that's what all of us come into this world having. We are rebellious to the Word of God. We don't really want it for our lives. No, we don't want God. That's how we come into this world. That's how we start out. But then somebody shared with you the Word of God. Somebody preached it to you and planted it home, whether you wanted it or wanted it not. And when you heard that Christ had done everything for you, that he had taken away your sins, that he had loved you so much as to die for you so that you could be right with God, your heart changed. It wasn't so stubborn and obstinate and rebellious anymore, but thankful praising our Lord and Savior for, for taking a rebellious person like me and saving me, even though I didn't even want it. But we still see that rebellious heart cropping up. We still see it when we try to go away from what God wants us to do. I don't want to do what He says. That, that just kind of cramps my lifestyle right now. I don't want to do what he's asking me to do because what he's asking is so difficult and so hard it's nigh impossible. Why even bother trying it? And when it comes down to this idea of preaching the word of God and planting it home, God, I'm not cut out for that. I'm not a preacher. I, I would stick out like a sore throat. And what would people say about me if I started sharing my faith with them? What if I, what if I started sharing God? How would they treat me? Would they reject me? Would they, would they unfriend me? Would they have nothing to do with me? If it's a co-worker, would they try to get me fired? It's a good thing we have a preacher to go talk to all those stubborn, obstinate, rebellious people, right? That's what we pay him for. And yes, you do. That is part of my calling. I am to preach the word to people whether they want it or want it not. Because that message is universal, that no one is left out from it, that Christ has died for you and paid for your sins. And yes, that is how I spend my time. But that doesn't mean you're off the hook. You know, God was very clear when he said, what are your responsibilities as a Christian? He said in 1 Peter chapter 2, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Preach the word and plant it home to those who like or like it not. What you may not realize is even having this charge from God is that you may have already been doing this. To preach the word of God, you don't have to be standing up in front of a church telling people about Jesus. To preach the word, it's simply, it's simply sharing what you believe. And how many of us have shared our faith with other people? Thinking about parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. How many of you shared familiar Bible stories with your children, your grandchildren? How many of you taught them to pray? How many of you brought them with you to church just to share what you know with them? Maybe you shared it with a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a spouse. Maybe you're still sharing it with a spouse in hopes that maybe someday they might actually want to hear this, that this might actually break through that barrier and they will know their Savior and believe in Him. Maybe it's that conversation you had with that friend, with that, with that neighbor, pointing them to what you believe and the hope that you have, the hope that you can find nowhere else but in God alone. 
When you share your faith, when you share what God has done for you, you are doing exactly what God called Ezekiel to do, to say to the people, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. And as you go about planting that seed, God says, I will make it grow. My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish the purpose for which I sent it. So how do we get over being just so intimidated by this idea, preach you the word and plant at home? How, how can we kind of get rid of these fears so that I can talk to these people in my life? Well, I know where the fear comes from, and, and rightfully so. Ezekiel probably had it himself. God talked about it that they, they're going to hurt you. Not necessarily physically, but their words. That they were like briars and thorns, like sitting among scorpions. That they're going to sting you, it's not going to be fatal, but it's going to hurt. And I'm sure all of us to some degree have experienced that. When we've shared what we believe, when we shared our God, and yet people just walk away from When they reject our God, it's like they reject us. Because it's such a component of who we are, the God we believe in, the forgiveness that I trust above all others. When you reject that, rejecting the most important thing to me and it hurts and that makes us afraid to speak it again and again the more we get hurt the less we want to do but God gives a solution to Ezekiel he gives us a solution of how to conquer that fear when he charged Ezekiel to preach he also told him at the same time son of man eat this scroll I'm giving you to fill your stomach with it. Eat this scroll. A scroll that contained as its title lament and woe and mourning. Not exactly a happy message. That's what all of us hear as we come to the Lord. We do hear, we say it even at the front of our service, you have rebelled against God. You have a rebellious heart. It's stubborn. It's obstinate. It wants to do its own thing. It doesn't want to follow what God says. But then it also tells us that we have a God of compassion. A God of patience. One who never gives up on us, no matter how many things we've done wrong, no matter how hard or how frequently we've rebelled against him, he still is sending people like Ezekiel out to preach you the word just so that you can hear it, that you can hear of this God, of this infinite compassion and love, so that you can be brought to faith, that you can be made clean. And when you hear that side of the message, after, yes, you've confronted that rebellious heart in yourself, and then you've heard forgiveness. That's when it tastes as sweet as honey in the mouth. That's when God's word becomes sweet. When I hear that I am forgiven, I am loved unconditionally, I am saved. When God was sending Ezekiel out, he told him, I want you to consume my word. Take it all in. All in my heart. children in the church. I seriously do. Because they're here, hearing God's word. That is an awesome thing. Never hinder children from coming to God. It's a beautiful thing. Because they need to hear the same word of God, the same word that he commissions us to preach. Because they need it just as much as we do. So Ezekiel is being filled up, built up with this word of God, and it's taking away his fears. It's reminding him that the Lord is in control, that he has saved me, and I trust in him. So we think about this idea, this commissioning from God, preach you the word and plant it home. If you're afraid, that's okay. I get afraid too. That's why we need to continue coming back to that word of God, continuing to consume it, to complete to fill the whole body up. 
Because when we do that, we know it takes our fear away. To end, I want to give you a challenge. It's all good to hear a sermon about preaching God's word, about how we need to share our faith. And yeah, we're going to walk away and say, yeah, I know I should do that. But now make it more specific. I want you to think of a person over this next week. Maybe go home today and do this. Think of a person who is classified as that stubborn, obstinate, rebellious person. That person who doesn't want to hear the word of God. Or maybe hasn't heard that word. I want you first to pray for that person. And then pray that God would give you an opportunity to speak to them. And pray that he would give you the words to speak. And then as you have those fears come up, as you think about witnessing to your faith, go back to God, go back to his promises. Know that he's going to be with you, that he's going to help you through, that his word is going to prevail, even if they reject you. And then follow the same command that God gave to Ezekiel. Go now and speak my words to them. Preach you the word and plant it home to those who like or like it not. And his word will not return to us ever. Return to him empty. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join at the middle of page 9 where we'll confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. Uh, before we gather our offerings, um, note to all our guests and visitors who are with us today, um, there's little note cards in each of the pews. Um, if you wouldn't mind filling those out, you can hand them either to the ushers as you leave or in the collection plate as it comes around. Those are just used for us to get to know you a little better. And if you want to, we can follow up with you uh, following today's service to tell you more about what we teach, preach, and believe here at Light of the Valley. So with that in mind, uh, we will gather our gifts and offerings to the <coughs> our members of the church council and our board of elders to come forward for their installation.
your brothers in Christ. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus liberated you from sin and death and made you members of his body, the church. Through word and sacrament, you have nurtured, you have been nurtured in faith. You have now been selected for positions of service to our Lord on behalf of this congregation. The Lord has entrusted you with an office which you are to carry out as his servants and according to his word. St. Paul wrote concerning service in the church, We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. The Lord seeks faithfulness from all who serve, as scripture says. It is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. The Lord does not seek from us what he has not given us. But when he does give a gift, his will is that we use it faithfully to his glory and for the benefit of his people. You are also, as servants of Jesus Christ and workers in this congregation, to set for your own families and the whole church the example of Christian lives. Make the word of God your foundation and guide. Search it daily for comfort and instruction. So that the congregation may be assured of your willingness to serve, I ask you in the presence of God and of this congregation, will you diligently and faithfully carry out the office entrusted to you according to the ability which God gives you? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. On behalf of the congregation here at Lila Valley Lutheran Church, I install Eric Meisen as president of Lila Valley, Alan Emery as Vice President, Steve Vanderwall as Trustees Chairman, Brian Koopman as Treasurer, Ben Askew as Financial Secretary, Andy Hartman as Head Elder, Gary Turk, Larry Cantarella, and Joel Schwartz as Elders, and Roger Letty as the Chairman of the Property Improvement Committee. I install you all into your offices in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God grant you all of his Holy Spirit and give you wisdom and strength to carry out your duties to his glory and for the good of his people. Members of Lila Valley, I urge you to regard these fellow believers as servants of Jesus Christ and God's gift to his church. Pray for them, support them in their service, and help them so that through the gospel ministry of this congregation, more people will be reached for Christ and his kingdom. Let us pray. Merciful and gracious God, our lives are open before you, and you hear our promises. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit into the hearts of your servants, that they may carry out their duties with diligence, boldness, and wisdom. Give them a spirit of devotion and prayer, that in every time of need they may present their request to you. Help them be examples of what is good, that by their lives they may build up your congregation and give the enemies of the church no cause for complaint. Make them a blessing to your believers. Help them to work with their pastor and with one another, and grant that by their service, the unity of this congregation be strengthened, your name be hallowed, your kingdom be enlarged, and your will be done. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Go then, and give yourselves full to the work of the Lord, because you know that you labor, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Go on, peace. Also, in the name of this congregation, we sincerely thank those members who in the past years have served the Lord in His church in positions of leadership. Thank Bob Curtis for his service as uh, trustees chairman, for Bennett Askew as his service as recording secretary for the church council, and Steve Vanderwall as his service as financial secretary for 23 years, the entire existence of this congregation. We thank them for their very faithful service. May the Lord our God graciously reward them for all that they have done to his glory and for the benefit of his church. Please stand for prayer. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are unceasingly thankful for your sacrifice to take away our sins and the sins of the whole world. We cannot repent.
repay you for bringing, uh, for bringing us to believe in, what, in you as our Savior. You have, though, commissioned us to share your word, to preach it, and to plant it home to those who like or like it not. Help us to consume your sweet word and to fill us up by that word that we would look for opportunities to share what you have done for all people. Remove all hindrances to your holy message and grant us, grant us confidence as we share your word even when people rebel against it. When your word is preached, move the listener's heart to accept your word joyfully and to know you as their Savior. Now, Lord, we ask you to hear us as we bring you our private petition. <coughs> Committing all these requests to your feet, Lord, we also ask you to hear us as we pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Well, thank you for coming out uh, this Sunday for worship. A pleasure to share God's word with you. And I pray that that word stay with you, fill you up so that you can go, as even our sign says, as you enter your mission field, wherever you have those people, that you too can plant the word uh, home. Um, announcements, uh, we'll be having a potluck here just following service, so fe please feel free to stick around for that. Um, don't feel like you need to go home. You can even save yourself making some extra lunch um, and uh, fellowship with the people you worship with today. Uh, do, uh, one uh, special announcement, the uh, Women's Book Club uh, from last week. A lot of people were, were sick or out of town, so actually we postponed it. It's going to be this Monday um, on the 13th, 7 p.m. at the Parsonage if you want to go join that. Um, also, we had a, a firearm safety presentation, and I had a uh, number of people ask about that. Uh, went awesome. Thank you to Clayton Carlson, uh, who led that. Um, it's basically like a three-parter, um, but we're kind of thinking with so many people who are interested in it and learning about it. It was very informational. Uh, we'll probably do it again at a later date, but you have questions. I'm realizing I know like nothing about firearms, so please talk to Clayton or email him, because he does know a lot of stuff. Uh, so thank you, Clayton. And if you want to, you can jump in um, on this next, uh, this next meeting that we have uh, coming up on uh, Thursday night at 6 p.m. here at church. Um, other than that, um, there is also the painting. We're going to start masking everything off next Sunday after service. So if you want to help out with that, even if you want to just kind of come dressed down, ready to work, that is perfectly okay. Steve Vanderwell will be kind of leading that effort um, and get our uh, fellowship hall painted over the week following the 19th. Um, with that in mind, um, how about uh, maybe I'll lead us in prayer, and then we'll let you guys get into the fellowship hall. If you want to stay for the potluck, of course, you're more than welcome to. If you want to head on out, I'll be at the back to, to greet you on your way. But let's, uh, let's return thanks to our Lord for all the wonderful things he gives to us. We pray. Lord, thank you for the food that we're about to receive, whether here or elsewhere. May it nourish our bodies. We ask that the word that we heard here in this service would nourish our faith to grow us confident in that word that does not return empty. But give us that, that fearless nature that we could preach that word and plant it home, knowing that it saves people uh, for eternal life, forgiving their sins, all through your message, Lord. And so we ask you, come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. So feel free to say hi to the people you worship with. I'll greet you at the back. God's blessings on you.